In today's video, we are going to be having a look at some super sick and sexy title-ish animations that are all super simple to make, but all look really cool and just a nice little easy way that you can spice up your project. Good thing about most of these is that you can actually make them into a Mogut, so super simple to use in Premiere Pro later on, so you don't have to recreate it every single time. But without further ado, let's hop straight into the tutorial. So in After Effects, I have a couple different compositions set up already, all at 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. And all we're gonna do here for the first one, which is a bit of a kinetic typography type thing that I saw on Twitter recently. And all we're gonna do here is start out with a text. And one thing we do wanna keep in mind is having a text that looks pretty cool. So in this case, we're gonna be working with Dharma Gothic that we're gonna change in just a second, but you can type out pretty much anything you want. So in our example, we had New Orleans, but I will do something a little bit more philosophical. So I'll go with uh, subscribe. Then once you have that text written out, you just want to make sure that you center the text and then you want to line it up right in the middle. And then you can change the font to be whatever you want, but a thicker, more angular font will typically work better for this. So I will use one of the Dharma Gothic variants. I think Gothic M and then as heavy as it goes, maybe heavy looks pretty good. And I'm just going to decrease the kerning just a little bit. Might even take it to an X bold just to make it a little bit easier to read and make sure that I have it lined up. Next thing we wanna do is change the color of it. So in this case, to mimic the example, I'm just gonna start with a gray color. And then what I'm gonna do here is hit P to open my position parameters. And I'm just gonna go forward to about one second, keyframe that, and then let's go back 12 frames. And then I'll move this up. And a good trick is you can hit Command R and then that'll bring up your rules and you can drag down to see the top and the bottom of where your text is, just so you know that you're actually going up far enough. So you just wanna make sure you go past this green marker, because we are gonna be masking the text. So we wanna make sure that we go above and below our text. Now let's go forward a little bit. Let's do two seconds and 12 frames. Keyframe again, go another 12 frames, and then move the text below the green lines at the bottom. Now we can take this, and I'm just gonna use flow, and I'm gonna use sexy speed because, well, it's sexy. So playing that back, we now have this super simple little animation that just goes up, and then it goes down. We are gonna duplicate this layer and we are gonna change the color to a greenish color. So in this case, I'm just gonna do like a slight neonish, light kind of pastel -y green. And I'm gonna hit U to show my keyframes. And to make this a little bit easier, we are just gonna shift command D to, do, to split this. And we're gonna move this, hit U to see them. And then we're gonna line up these keyframes with one another. And then we're gonna take this and move it forward so that instead of having to do everything twice, we can just animate one layer and then just offset the rest of it. And let's just end the right here by hitting N. And then if we play that back, we now have a text that kind of comes in. And then we had another one where it pushes down. So it's looping infinitely. Now we can create our mask and I'm just gonna go forward to a place where it's standing still. And I'm going to my rectangle tool up here. And I wanna make sure that there is no stroke selected. And then I wanna pick a fill. Let's do a red that's nice and bright. And all we wanna do here is kind of line it up with these little bars that we have here and then we can hit T to open the opacity and just decrease it a little bit. And then with that layer selected, we can search for size and unlink that. And then we just wanna make sure that we kind of reach right at the top. So I might scale this down a little bit. It will cut off just the tiniest bit, but it's not too important. And then if we do wanna make this into a mugger afterwards and be able to type however long of a word we want, we wanna increase the width of it to cover the full thing, just so we can have words that cover the full screen if we want to. Now we can click this and hit T again to bring up the opacity and turn it to 100. And we can take this text and we are gonna pre-compose this and just name this text pre. And then we will use this track mount right here. So now we have a nice little text animation where it just kind of scrolls down and it looks pretty simple. This is where all the fun begins. So we are gonna create a solid by hitting Command Y and I'm just gonna name this Fractal Noise. You can also name this Displacement Map. It's gonna be the same thing. First thing we're gonna do is add a gradient wrap to this and we want the gradient to go from left to right. So you can select this little marker up here and just click over on the side here and change that to zero. And then the same with the other end, you can just move it over this way. And let's just do 1920 by 540 to get it straight. Now we are gonna add a fractal noise effect because that's what's gonna drive this essentially. We wanna adjust the settings of this a little bit to get the right look, which is a bit more blobby, which we won't be getting with this specific type of fractal type. So in the fractal type, you can go in and let's pick something like threads and then decrease the complexity a good bit to something like one maybe, and then open up the transform. Let's scale this up a good bit and then we can play around with the contrast 
to just get a little more detail in there. So we have some brighter whites and some darker dots. Just play around with this until you get something that looks kind of blobby. And you can even go ahead and play with the evolution options until you get a look that kind of looks good. And you want to think that we want it to be kind of centered in the, in the center. So this looks pretty good. We have some nice shapes going across here. And then we want to change the blending mode to something like multiply so that we get the gradient from white to dark. And then also we have the fractal noise map there. That's because we are going to be adding an adjustment layer. So if I shift command Y below our fractal noise, then I'm going to add the time displacement effect which is super powerful, can be used for so many things, but then I'm gonna set the displacement layer to the fractal noise layer, and I'm gonna select effects and masks. And just like that, you can see we're already getting some of that look. Now, it's a little bit choppy, so we can increase the time resolution to something like 200, which will just smoothen it out a little bit. And this can be a little bit more render intensive on some slow machines, just because, well, it is a pretty render intensive effect. But playing that back, we now have a super sick little title animation where it's kind of like this blobby liquidy look almost. You can do two different texts if you want as well. So if you go into your pre-comp here and let's just change the bottom text. And let's just do like and comment. So if we go back into the main layer here, you still get some of that look where the text intersects, uh, but you also still get some pretty cool move movement where it does it. But that is pretty much all there is for this first one. If you do want to set it up to be an, uh, MOGA later on, if you go into your text layer and then open the Essential Graphics panel, if you don't see it, you can go to Window and then go to Essential Graphics. Then you want to make sure that you select the text pre and then we can drag in these, uh, the source text parameters into our little layer in here. And a cool thing we can do here is if we open up the source text for the other two, if we then take one of them and link it to the one, and then we just drag this one in here, we can now change this. So let's say we want this to say hello and good. Now it should change it for both of them. So because we split them up, we would normally have to change both the layers, but because we link the source text parameter, it's a lot easier to change it. So you just have to change it once. And then you can always go in and change this to something like buy and welcome and export as a motion graphics and you've got it in Premiere Pro. Next one is a, another super cool title animation, which is like a broken glass type of look. Again, we will be starting with our text. So click the text layer and then let's type in broken because I am oh so creative. And in this case, we want to pick a little bit of a different font, maybe like uh, Helvetica would work pretty well. Uh, let's do a Helvetica Noi bold and I'm just going to center this up and maybe change this text color to be like a little bit of a tinted gloss color, maybe a little bit more greenish here, almost like a turquoise type thing. And the easy thing about this is we're just going to be using the shape tool to split it up. So let's find a point over here. And again, you can use your ruler to find this. So let's just make a little intersection up here. We can start the mask for our breaking gloss up here to keep it very similar. And all we want to do here is click. And you also want to make sure that you have the text layer, the layer selected, of course, and then you just want to click and drag and maybe do like a little bit like that. And now you have this mask, so you just want to duplicate that and then hit M to bring up the mask and instead of add, change it to subtract. So now we've got this layer in here, which is like a broken gloss, like the broken segment. And now all we have to do is animate it. I'm just going to remove these rulers because we don't need them anymore. And let's go forward to about three seconds. And on my broken section, I'm going to hit P and keyframe the position and I'm going to go forward a little bit and then I'm just going to move the position a little bit to make it look like it's kind of slid off just a tiny bit and we want to make sure that these keyframes are pretty tight together to make it look a little bit more realistic so it kind of it's a little bit more snappy and you can always go in and again add something like a sexy speed and that'll just help it out a little bit more that it looks a little bit broken but we want to sell it just that much more and we can do that by adding an adjustment layer by hitting shift command Y, and then we're gonna add a transform effect. And in the transform effect, we are, before we actually do anything with it, we're gonna add two slider controls so that we can animate a little bit of a camera shake. And then we can alt click the position in the transform effect. And what we wanna type here is a wiggle expression. And then we wanna take this pick whip and drag it to the first one and then comma and select the second slider. And now we can animate a little bit of a camera shake here. So if we go, to write about where it happens, keyframe both of these, maybe set them to 10 by 10, go a little bit back so that we get a bit of buildup and just set them to zero. And let's click U on our layer here. And then right after it happens, just a couple frames after, we can just copy these 
copy and paste these first keyframes so it goes back. So now we have something that looks kind of like that where it shakes and then it breaks. And just like that, we have a little bit of a broken gloss animation where we have some buildup with the shake and then the actual breaking of the gloss just adds that little bit of realism. The next little text animation is a pretty cool one I saw recently online as well. And it's just using paths to create a really cool look. And I like to think of it like a snake text type of look. And I just think it'll work really well for like little animated pieces, spicing title cards up a little bit. But super simple, we are gonna take our pen tool, we are gonna remove the fill, and then we are gonna add a stroke this time. And I like to keep it colorful, add some nice colors in there, and then we just wanna click and drag until we get a pretty cool looking shape over here. And then we're gonna increase the stroke with a good bit, enough to where our text would fit inside of it. And then we can click off and we can change the color and you can make however many layers of this that you want, just depending on the look that you're sort of going for here. But I like to go pretty, pretty wild with it, maybe like two, three layers, just to fill up the screen pretty nice and get some good colors in there. So something like that looks pretty good. And all we gotta do now is if we take some text and let's just type out like and subscribe, if I could spell, just like that. And let's scale that down a little bit so that we know it'll fit inside. This looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna center that up. Now let's take our one shape here. Let's take this yellow one. And if we search for path up here, and then we copy that, and then on with our text layer selected, hit G to select your mask and tool, click and then hit Command V to paste that path onto there. And then you can click off, and then if you open up the text, go into text, path options, and then select the mask that you just added. Now we get this text down here. Maybe we'll change the color a little bit so we can actually see it, maybe like a black. Now we can play around a little bit with where we want it to start and the animation, but the first thing I'm gonna do is select it. And at the end of it, I'm gonna add a space and then I'm gonna hit Command A to select it all. And then I'm gonna hit Command C. And then I'm just gonna paste it a whole bunch of times, just enough that we can get some animation in there. And then you wanna animate the either the first or the last margin, doesn't really matter, but just keyframe that, go to the end and just move it in whichever direction you kinda want. And that'll give you some nice animation in there that just moves the text along. But as you can see, the way that the text is applied to that path is on top of it. So we can move it a little bit to center it up a little bit better. And we just wanna go left and right and up and down a little bit until we get something that looks kind of like it's in the middle. And that is pretty much it. I just love this effect and I thought it was super useful, especially knowing that you can put text on a path like this and incorporate it in a bit more of a creative way. The next one is a hidden type of text effect. And I just thought this was a cool little concept. We're gonna start with a background and by hitting Command Y, we're gonna create a solid, and we're gonna make it like a lightish grayish color, and we're just gonna rename this background. And now we're gonna add some text, and, and for this, I'm just gonna type hidden text because we're gonna be secretive. And let's scale this up a little bit, and maybe change the font to something a little bit cooler. Maybe the Kaneda Gothic is pretty cool. Gives us some nice angles, just looks pretty cool, I think scale that up and decrease the kiting a little bit and make sure that it's centered. And then we are gonna take some shape elements just to add a little bit more spice in there. We're gonna change the stroke color to be the same as our text. And then we're just gonna draw out some circles. That looks pretty good. Maybe decrease the width of that just a little bit. Maybe we'll duplicate this a couple of times and move it around to get a pretty cool looking thing. And maybe on this middle one, we can change it from just a solid stroke to maybe add some dashes to it just to spice up the look a little bit. Increase the dash. That is pretty much all we're gonna do for our little hidden part. So we're gonna take all these layers and we're gonna pre-compose this. I'm just gonna name this hidden pre. And then I'm gonna make sure that I go into my solid by shift command Y and copy this color. In my layer in here, I wanna add an adjustment layer and add a fill effect to this. And then I'm gonna change the color to be the same as our background where you can see nothing. And to this layer, we are gonna add a fill effect. And we are gonna change this color to be a little bit darker than what we currently have our background to be, something like that. And then we are gonna add a radial fast blur, just like that. And then we are gonna add a CC composite, which is gonna take the original color of our text. I don't know why After Effects is doing this, but apply it to the top. And now we can go in and we can play around with these effects to get the exact look that we want, specifically the radial force blur. 
we're gonna change that to brightest, which will just give us a little bit more. It kind of looks like a drop shadow type thing almost. We are gonna add a little circle in here and we're gonna remove the stroke. We're gonna add a fill that is bright white because it's gonna ser serve as our realistic light. I'm just gonna draw out a little circle down here and then I'm gonna center it up. Gonna add a deep glow to that little circle. And then down in my composition, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna new and then add a null object. I'm gonna take the shape layer, which is our light, and I'm gonna parent it to the null object, which is rename this light. And then we're gonna take the radial force blur and we're gonna take the center of it and link it to the position of the null. So we're gonna open that up and then we can link it. So now if we move the null around, our shadows follow with it. So it kind of looks like this little light is controlling the shadows around it. And we can get a super nice little animation with this. So let's take it about above the scene, keyframe the position just like that, go forward a little bit, go down right below it maybe, go over a little bit more, go up to the side and up and I go a little bit further out. Just keep moving this around until you get a cool little looking thing. Let's add some sexy speed to this just like that. And now I get this nice little animation with it coming down, kind of moving around and affecting the way the shadows kind of look. I just think it looks super cool, especially the, with the little light moving around. It's also a great way to create some really long drop shadows with the fast box blur and then using CC composite to get your original color of whatever you have going on in there. So the last thing we're going to be looking at is a super clean cinematic type title. And this is super easy and can also be used as a mogut. I really love this look and it's very popular. I saw something similar to it in the Apple Music Super Bowl Usher video. We're gonna take our text and let's just type out title. We are gonna do a capital T and then the rest is not gonna be capital. And we are gonna change it to a nice red color. And I'm gonna change it to a font called Filmo Type EL. Just right there, boom. We don't want it all to be capitalized. Scale that up a good bit because at the end of the day, it is a title and we want it to catch somebody's attention. I love the way this script font looks. And all we're gonna do to this is just add a little bit of animation to it. And then we are gonna add some texture to it as well, but not in the traditional sense. The animation we're gonna add to this is an opacity animation. And we just want a little bit of a flickering text look. So if I open up my opacity animator, I'm gonna add a wiggly selector. And let's just rename this to opacity flicker open up the wiggly selector and set the wiggles per second to zero and the correlation to zero as well. And then we can decrease the opacity to zero. So now we get, if we play with the random seed, we get a nice little flickering effect. And all we're gonna do here is keyframe the random seed, go forward to about second and a half and set it to something like 100. So now we get this flickering text look. You can change the pacing of it. And all we're gonna do here is just keyframe the start at 100 at the very end and then go back to the beginning and you can set it something to zero. And then we get this nice little text flickering animation. We are gonna hit you to hide all of that and we're gonna add a deep glow effect. And we're gonna decrease this a whole bunch. We're gonna set it to something like 0.3 in the exposure and then something like 20. And this depends on the size of your text, but maybe like a 30 looks pretty good. And just a very subtle glow look. You can even add a fast box blur to this as well and put it before the deep glow and just set it to something like 12 iterations and then do something like a 0.2, maybe even a 0.1, depending on the size of it, just to make it a little less sharp, which looks really good if you're doing like a cinematic piece or you're doing like a film gray type of look. But this in and of itself looks pretty sick. You can add a little bit more spice to it if you duplicate this and then hit U. And then in the random seed, you click that, then right click it, go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. And that'll just offset a little bit. So you get some, you get a more thicker look. Most of it is filled in pretty well, but you just have the text itself flickering. So it just kind of looks like it gets a little bit more glow almost. Kind of hard to explain. You can spice this up even a little bit more, add some more text in there, like a directed by me. Change this font to like a thick font, like a Dharma Gothic, like really condensed, thick, movie looking font like that and decrease the size of it a whole bunch and just have it down here somewhere. Duplicate that a couple of times, go to the composition and then sit right in the middle and then go to selection and then distribute them evenly between one another. And you can take this and drag it down here. And now you have a nice little title animation. You can turn this into a MOGA. If you go into the central graphics tab that we opened, go into the cinematic title. And again, we want to link the source text for both instances if that's what you want to do. 
So we can take the source text and we can link that to that source text and then take this and place it in our little scene in here. And we can change it to something like, like. And just like that, we have the title updated. You can always hide this as well. And then you get more of that flickering look that we had in the beginning or two instances for a thicker look. But that is pretty much it for this video. Just a few different really sick title animations that you can do super easily and also uses mogurts, at least most of them. So, I mean, win-win if you ask me. And if you are interested in the project files, they will be available on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash my poll. And uh, yeah, thank you. I'll see you again next week and uh, peace out.